How about now? Yeah, we need another turn. All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming uh, to our post 13 Veterans Day ceremony. Um, uh, invocation, Dave Hall. Let us pray. As we gather today in honor and pay respects to our veterans who have served in the armed forces of our nation, we ask that you watch over them, inspiring them to serve you, this country, and the American Legion in every new and creative way. Comfort our veterans who are in the hospitals or homes. Lighten their burdens, relieve their suffering and pain. Restore them the blessings of health again. We pray also for those who have given their lives in the service of our country and for those, our fellow veterans, who have served this nation both in time of battle and in time of peace and are now at rest. We give you thanks for each pension long person belonging to the American Legion Post 13. These officers and members have been blessed with a year of good works and a nation of peace. Give us faith as we look into another year, which will soon be here. Amen. Amen. Honor guard and cut. Present arms. Have, actually have Cassidy Witt from Allegheny it's actually going to sing the national anthem for us. <coughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oops. Now we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Chris, Christopher Wolf and Shelby Wolf.
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, arms, at rest. All right. The introduction of our, I guess, of course, we have our post 13, 13 honor guard. Um, it's your Leroy Boots being, which today's his birthday, turns up 100 years old. He's a World War II veteran. <laughs> Ray Morris, our, uh, our banger of Cumberland, Mr. Ross Fiori, and Mr. Joe George, City Councilman. Mr. Ray Morris. Uh, I, I, I prepared this to be outside, so I'll, I'll keep it short now. They wanted me to keep it short anyway. But, uh, it truly is an honor to be able to come and speak to you. Uh, every year when I get the invitation to come and, and speak here for Memorial Day and for Veterans Day, I, I'm truly honored that uh, that you want to actually have me come out and, and speak to you at your events. I, I, I truly am, am blessed that you that you have invited me. I mean that. And Boots uh, and I had a, a great conversation earlier. Uh, what a fine gentleman on, on his 100th birthday. What a wonderful way to honor him here on Veterans Day. Uh, in, our, in, our, in our talks, he was telling me that he, during World War II, he was in England and he used to load bombs into, uh, into the planes while he was there. And my father was a navigator in the Army Air Corps. Who knows, maybe he was uh, loading some of those bombs into the planes that my father was, was flying in. But, man, I, I, wanna, I really want to thank all of you for being here, you know, and being here today. And, you know, because it's really important for everyone to, to honor our veterans, and, and, uh, and not just today, but every day during the year. And I think that, uh, you know, I know when I'm talking to this group of people that I'm talking to the people that do that and the people that truly appreciate what our veterans have done for us. So, so thank you, though, for everything that you all have done for our country. And I say that for the soldiers and, and also their families. You know, because when, when it comes to the service to the country, it is, it is the families also that are, are, are really providing that service, not just, the, uh, not just the veteran themselves. And I think it's important that we remember our service to veterans and let us renew our, our, our promise to them. You know, uh, as, as people entered the service, they were, they were promised uh, that they would, uh, they would have, have benefits and, and it's important that we always make sure that the veterans are, you know, provided the benefits that they were told they would have, and we need to continue that and make sure that we do that. Um, you know, because let's thank them because these are these are the people who every day risk their lives in, our, in the service of our country, and because of them, we're able to live in the country that is that is free today for all that you have done. I cannot thank you enough for for that. So. Uh, my sincerest thanks to all of those who served, and uh, I, I, I'll say God bless you all, and, and thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, next, we'd like to do uh, Mr. Roxiotti. As the Mayor said, uh, we really appreciate the invitation of being here. Uh, one of the real privileges and honors of being an elected official is to be able to come to such those things. Not everybody gets a chance to stand up here and thank veterans, thank their families for all that they've done. Um, I was trying to think today what kind of message I, I could possibly give. It might be relevant to everyone here. And I, I guess uh, the, the best message I get, I think, give, I think that uh, there's a big responsibility for all of us that are getting older to teach our children, our grandchildren about service without a draft, whether you're for or not for a draft. We know that the number of veterans is dwindling and that means there's not as many people affected by whatever might be going on with veterans today. And I just saw a gentleman, you may have seen it on the news last night, he's riding a bicycle across the country. He's a retired colonel, uh, so I've served in Afghanistan and I'm not gonna repeat his figure because I might not get it right. 
but the number of veterans that are struggling with substance abuse and mental health problems and the number of veterans who are committing suicide, the number he gave was astronomical and it just brought tears to your eyes that people who have served us like they served us so selflessly could come back and uh, the horrors of war have impacted them so much that they're taking their own lives. He was, he was saying there was actually a gentleman in his paratroop unit who is now living in a dumpster. He found him, he's living in a dumpster somewhere. So uh, God help us if we, we forget our veterans and those who are on active duty and all their families. And I, we can't thank a group like you all enough for keeping that, that spirit alive. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, for, uh, I'd like to introduce Ms. Brenda Nippenberg uh, as our guest speaker. A little biography on Brenda. Uh, she was born and raised in Cumberland, Maryland, graduated from Fort Hill High School, class of 84. She holds degrees in English from Prosper State University. She holds other leader, leadership credentials at both the state and local levels. She was appointed by Governor Larry Hogan to the Maryland's Economical <coughs> Environment Council in 2015 and by demonstrating exceptional leadership, received Maryland's Gold Award in 2017 and 2018. She received a Greater Good Award from the Greater Cumberland Community. She has upheld upper levels management positions the Free Lack of America Corporation, the City of Cumberland, and the Greater Cumberland Community, as well as serving on other local boards and community committees. Sorry. 2018, she began to work as a special assistant to the Chief of Community Development for the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, NCRC, in Washington, D.C., in July 2021. She is promoted to the contracts manager for the construction team at NCRC. Ms. Nittenberg currently resides in Alexander, Virginia with her husband, John, and daughter, Hayley. Brenda. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Jeff, for such a kind introduction. I'm so thrilled to be here today to acknowledge the many veterans in attendance and to personally offer my thanks for your service. Before I begin, however, in the spirit of full disclosure, I am compelled to share that I myself am not a veteran. So in preparing remarks for today, I considered, as many of you may be at this moment, what could I possibly offer that would be meaningful to those of you who are veterans and provide the respect that every one of you deserves. Well, from the moment that Jeff approached me in September, I did a fair share of research and talked with several veterans that I know. Through this process, I learned a great deal that only increased my level of respect for all veterans and military personnel. Before I get into my findings, let's just consider the history of the day itself. Armistice Day, as it was first known, was observed in Europe beginning at 11 a.m. on November 11, 1918, giving universal recognition for the ending of World War I, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. It wasn't until 1926 that Armistice Day officially received its name in America through a con congressional resolution and then became a national holiday through a similar congressional action 12 years later. If the idealistic hope had been realized that World War I was the war to end all wars, November 11th might still be called Armistice Day until the start of World War II in 1939. The first celebration using the term Veterans Day occurred in Birmingham, Alabama in 1947. Raymond Weeks, a World War II veteran, organized National, National Veterans Day to honor all veterans with a parade and other festivities on November 11th. Later, U.S. Representative Ed Reese of Kansas proposed a bill that would change Armistice Day to Veterans Day. And then finally, in 1954, Congress passed the bill that President Eisenhower signed proclaiming November 11th as Veterans Day. In addition, 
Through my research and conversations, I also learned that being a military veteran means that you sacrifice several years of your life for the privilege of obeying orders from those most likely of a higher rank than you. It meant performing a seemingly endless number of push-ups and sit-ups and hiking countless miles while probably carrying too heavy of a rucksack. It meant drills and or grass drills, shooting ranges, GI parties and which party favors were typically sponges, brooms, or mops, and of course field trips, more times than not, in the cold and rain. It meant mind-numbing hours on guard duty or kitchen patrol, and if you had managed to earn yourself an extra duty by breaking one or more of the numerous regulations, then you had up to 22 hours of the same mind-numbing work, followed by a generous two-hour sleep, and then you did it all again the next day. But being a military veteran also means that you were willing to fight and die in service to this great country. It meant being separated from friends, family, and loved ones. It meant giving up control of your life to others and having to trust your well-being to them. It meant risking life and limb and potentially permanent injury, either to complete a mission, help your buddies fighting alongside you, or just in doing what you were supposed to do. It meant you took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and you lived up to that part of the bargain every single day. For those of you who weren't drafted, it also meant that you voluntarily signed up. So I say, why in the world would you or anyone volunteer to do this? Well, the most resounding answer was a deep desire to serve country. Others wanted the benefits to further their education or learn a trade, while still others said that at that point in their life, there was no other option available to them. But because of their service, they are better men and women. As many of you know, in both World War I and World War II, it is reported that 16 and a half million Americans took part. Similarly, it is also reported that 470,000 of them died in service, 292,000 in battle alone. As I read those numbers and then say them aloud to you, I'm incredibly humbled and I just offer a silent prayer of thanks to each one of them that paid the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we all enjoy. With these thoughts in mind, I could not be prouder to have so many veterans in my own family rep representing a variety of branches. Please allow me a moment to say their name and acknowledge their service. My brother, Jimmy Friend, Army. My father, James Friend, Maryland Guard Reserve. My father-in-law, John Nippenberg Sr., Army Reserve Military Police. Uncles, Bill Kaiser, Joe Bishop, and Bob Nippenberg, Army. Uncles, Joe McCusker, Billy Friend, Sammy Friend, Steve Nippenberg, and Raymond Sturtz, Navy and great uncle Haven McCusker, Marines. My maternal grandfather, Paul McCusker, Marines, and my maternal great-grandfather, Joe McCusker, Army. Through this research, I was quite surprised to learn of my husband's great uncle, Melvin Sturt's Army, a member of the 135th Infantry Regiment, 34th Infantry Division, who perished during a World War II conflict in North Africa and is buried in the American cemetery there. Following Uncle Melvin's death, his family reserved the Purple Heart Medal to honor his ultimate sacrifice. And there are so many other stories just like his. So as I wrap up these remarks, I offer these final thoughts to consider, especially on a week where we just had an election. All across America, people debate politics they speak their minds, they worship as they choose, and they raise their families enjoying the privileges of freedom earned by brave veterans like men and women like yourselves. We are in your debt. You have made a difference in more ways than you can possibly see and in more lives than you'll ever know. Veterans, you have done your duty to your families, to your communities, to your fallen comrades and to your country. You have honorably served this nation with great distinction. 
and we, I, cannot say it enough for your service in war and in peace. Thank you for your sacrifice and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to the recognitions of the state flag. <coughs> Army. Marines. Navy. United States Air Force. United States Coast Guard, Merchant Marines, Order of the Purple Heart, and the American Legion, and VFW. Thank you. Now we'll have the, <laughs> now we'll have the uh, laying of the wreaths. We have <coughs> Pate Milton, Unit 13 Auxiliary, along with SEL Commander Brian Neff, um, representing Coast Guard Team Virginia Whitaker and uh, Jeff Davis, and representing District 7, which is all the districts, uh, the American Legion is First Vice Commander Colleen Stefano and Margaret Steele. Okay, Honor Guard, attend, up. present arms. There will be three shots fired. The bugler will then play taps for those members of Post 13 that could not attend our ceremony today. In closing, we'll have our benediction, Chaplain. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, grant to our living veterans grace, to our departed veterans rest, to the nation peace to all of us the promise of everlasting life give a light to guide us on our way courage to support us and your blessing to unite us in service to you our country and our american legion amen That concludes our ceremony for today. Let's thank everybody for coming out. And uh, food will be available. Uh, 
FYI, Rocky Gap is still on. They'll be inside it in the chapel. Thank you.